What is up you guys, you're watching Sergio Secrets. Before I get started with today's video, if you can please give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, I'm posting every single day until further notice to the channel, I really really appreciate it and I'm also taking all video requests so go ahead and leave them in the description box and also how do you like about my new background, I actually changed them so now below me are all the footwear and on top are bags so I feel like this is more of a better feel, you get more of the handbags, I feel like it's a lot more open, a lot more spacious so you guys like this backdrop a lot. So today's requested video was top 10 favorite beginner handbags so this video I did take a while to kind of think about the bags that I wanted to list on this video and um, go back to my time of when I was in high school saving up for these bags and I do say, still save up to these bags you know right now I'm a little bit more comfortable when where if I do see something that I like I can buy it for the most part but I do you know plan out and I make sure that I did something that I'm gonna be getting a lot aware of so you know I took myself back to in time and what would be bags that would be really great really durable like a lot of my bags that I have are very clean cut classic like some of my Dior bags you know they are kind of trendy but they're forever bags for me my collection include bags that were durable that will get a lot of wear and that are different styles. They're not all crossbodies, they're not all totes, they're not all satchel. The list is a really great mix of, you know, some that are a little bit more edgy, some of them are a little bit bigger, smaller. So I think this is a really great base of top 10 favorite bags that I think are worth the money, paying full price or off price. Some of these bags that I'm including get a really great deal on the pre-love market. So I thought my designer bag was from the pre-love market. So I decided to include some handbags that are really great to get a good price in the pre-love market. And I'll be disclosing those as the video goes on. And other than that, let's get started with today's my top 10 favorite beginner handbags that I think are really great choices. So one is going to be the Chloe Marcy. Now the Chloe Marcy, you can get a lot of great deals on this bag. On Fashion File, they tend to go for anywhere from 5 to 40% off the retail price, even if they're new or good condition. So Chloe Marcy has been in the collection for Chloe for 10 years. It is a bread and butter. It will not be going anywhere anytime soon. I think this is such a classic bag. Now of all the bags that I have in my collection, the bag is a little bit more on the casual side, but it is a classic bag that, you know, it doesn't have too much branding, but you can still distinguish that it is a Chloe handbag. At least if you get the smaller crossbody, the, the larger crossbody, or the actual satchel, I think any of the collection from the Chloe Marcy is a really great choice. You would get a lot of wear. You can wear them with a white top, a denim, the, the bag, and you're good to go. You can also wear it with a blazer, with a pair of trousers, a heel, and you can also wear this bag. So I think this bag is multifunctional. You can get a lot of wear. There's some people that have had this bag for, let's say, like four or five years, and it, for the most part, it holds up pretty well. Handmade, they're really nice and beautiful handbag. So I think that the Chloe Marcy as a first designer handbag would be a really great choice. And my the colorway that I would get it in would either be the tan the Mato Grey color or the Classic Black. I think those three colors are great. There are more seasonal colors that they do, but I think those are their three core colors that they do in all the Chloe Marcy variations. I know there's like the Chloe Drew, the other Chloe bags, but for me, if I were to buy a Chloe bag, especially my first one, it would definitely be the Chloe Marcy. It's not gonna be going anywhere. It's their bread and butter, so I think investing in this bag in your wardrobe would be definitely worth the money. So that is going to be the first one, and this is also a choice that you can get a really great deal on the pre-love market. Just decided to throw that out there, and I can, if I find any of these bags on sales or brand new or just link the items, I will leave them all down below. But as far as MSRP for the Chloe Marcy, it goes from $890 for the small one, brand new, to $1990 for the medium classic satchel. Second bag that I'm going to be including is right here, and it is the Saint Laurent Lulu. Now, you may not get it in this color. I have it mine in this kind of pretty pink color, the silver hardware. But what I like about this bag is the MSRP on this one is $1,190. What I like is that it does not have a chain strap. It doesn't really have anything. It's just such a nice and wearable bag that you can get so much wear out of. It's just a classic kind of puffy bag. It is more of that smoother leather, but you don't really see the wear on it. And I like this little wide detail. You can open it up, a little zipper, a pocket in the middle, and then another main compartment, and it fits your phone in there perfectly. You can fit so much stuff, as you can see, to carry a card case or anything, because there are actually card case compartments built on the inside. It's a nice, easy snap closure. You can also take this out. You can wear this as a little clutch. And what a lot of people don't know about the Lulu, which I always have to tell people about it, because it's such a great feature on the bag. Take the strap off and make it like this, so as a little wristlet. 
I think this is such a functional, usable bag. You can get a lot of wear. I feel like this bag will not be going anywhere as far as like that, why I still keep on making this bag. I, I think would be better to buy brand new if you're going for a classic color just because they do tend to hold their resale value for me. If I'm only getting a discount that's under $100, I'd rather just buy it brand new. But this one is gorgeous. It's nice and soft. A lot of people really like this bag. If you see a lot of YouTube reviews, and I suggest you watching other YouTube videos on a lot of the bags I'm talking about, it just holds up really well. You can fit a lot. And this is a great first bag because unlike like the YSL wallet on chain, which I've had in the past, it didn't really fit a lot. And I would have to compromise a lot, and you would stretch out the sides. So a lot less than the wallet on chain. It's $15.50 for the larger one, and then I believe $13.50 for the smaller one, and this one's $11.90. And I just feel like for this one, you get a lot more value, a lot more space, a lot more transitional. Like I said, you can, make it, you can carry it like a little wristlet. You can carry it as a full crossbody, a shoulder bag, a clutch. I just think on this one, you can get so much wear out of it. And, you know, don't let the little small size fool you. You can fit quite a bit on this one. So this is going to be my second choice as a first designer handbag. Now, my third choice may be a controversial opinion, but I want to go ahead and and say it and if you can get your hands on the multi pochette I also think third one the Louis Vuitton multi pochette is a great beginner bag the reason is is because it, it has so much variety you can use this one as a little coin purse for me I personally put my airpods in here and it has the smaller monogram the bigger monogram you know, this bag has had two price increases since it got introduced I think the last price increase was 1640 to 770 so if you can get your hands on it I definitely recommend it and I know I'll get a lot of questions saying oh how can I get this bag since all the stores are closed well Louis Vuitton has to make money um, somehow so these bags have been popping up on the website you just have to check it very very consistently or like let's say in the middle of the night and they will be available where it says add to cart so that's a little trick and I know some of you guys have been getting like the toiletry pouch and very very hard to get items on the Louis Vuitton website or you have to just consistently check and once you see it boom go ahead and order it the reason why I say that this is a great first bag is because it has multi functions it's so many pieces you can mix and match it you can wear it like this you know what I mean? You can use this one as a little makeup bag. You can just, it just has so much variety, so much use for it. And I feel like as a first bag, you want to get something that you can get a lot of wear out of it that has so much uh, uses. Even if, let's say, you're not using the bag and let's say you're traveling and you want to have like a little pouch where you can put maybe some cosmetics or you want to put, you know, whatever you need to put in here. Your, maybe your passport and it just fits all your stuff in here. You can put it in your luggage. It's nice. It's durable. It's canvas. So I just feel like the, with the multi-pochette, you can get so much wear so much usability so much usage out of it so I just feel like as of one of your first designer handbags I definitely recommend it I just think it's so much pieces you get so much value yes it has had two price increases yes it's hard to get your hands on but if you can get your hands on like I did I got so lucky with this bag um, just buying it right from the boutique I just think that you do get a lot of value and I feel like you would get a lot of wear out of it so um, like I said, throughout this video, I'm making sure that all the bags you can get all over wear and you can transition and, you know, with this multi push a big fan of it, I'm not going to sit here and lie and I swallowed my own words, but I'm here to say that I do think that the Louis Vuitton multi push is worth the money and if you can get your hands on it, definitely go for it and yeah, so the Louis Vuitton multi push is for the win and like I said, it's just versatility and it's such a great first bag as pieces because even if you're not let's say you do get another Louis Vuitton bag you can get a little charm bag you can just you know like I said you can put all these little pieces inside your let's say Louis Vuitton never full if you ended up being a bag that you get down the road or a bag that you already have so I just think that this one is just like I said multi-use that's why it's called the multi pochette just a bunch of SOGs mixed into one bag I think it's a really great idea and I do think that it is worth the money the bag that I'm recommending and this one's a great pre-loved version there's a lot of great deals on this bag and it is going to be the classic Balenciaga city bag with the classic Balenciaga city bag this one does lose a little bit of structure it's more of a free flow bag for me I would personally go for a little bit of the smaller size or just a regular satchel but I wouldn't go any bigger than that just so it kind of keeps somewhat of its shape and it's just a classic it doesn't really have a lot of branding so you can wear another brand let's say if you're wearing a brandish shirt um you know a branded shoe and i just feel like it kind of complements it or if you just wear such a sleek like a denim jacket a black top black trousers some black shoes and that city bag whatever color you get i just think it's such a um, 
a rock and roll, very chic bag that, you know, yes, you can distinguish what it is, it bag is, but what I like is that it's such a low-key bag, kind of like the Chloe Marcy. It's loud, it doesn't have a big branding on it, and that's what I kind of like about some of my bags as well that I have in my collection that, you know, they may not be all monogrammed out, they may not have a huge label on them, but they are very discreet and you can distinguish what it is if you know a thing or two about designer handbags, but it's been in their collection for many, many years. I know they do different variations of it, but in the pre-love market, you can definitely get um, city bags under $1,000 that are retail $2,000 plus, so I think that's a first bag if you do want kind of like that minimalistic, something you can it's a little bit more low-key that I feel like won't clash with a lot of items depending on the color that you get. I definitely recommend that the Balenciaga City Bag would be a really, really great choice. For me, I do see myself adding a Balenciaga bag in the future as far as the city. I think it is an iconic bag and when I do go for this bag, it's still going to 100% definitely going to be a pre-love version so I can get a great deal with the exact same one that I want versus having to settle what they have in the boutiques. And that's a really great thing about pre-loved is that you can see every single variation that a bag has came in and you can shop through different websites. My personal favorite pre-loved website that I only really shop at is going to be Fashion File. They're backed by Neiman Marcus so they have a reputation to uphold and they're there's no way that they're going to be selling you something that's unauthentic or something that's replica. That's never going to happen with Fashion File. And a lot of bloggers and a lot of people that are in this kind of luxury YouTube space really, really recommend Fashion File. I've tried them. I've bought from Fashion File and I've sold to Fashion File. And I think it's a really great thing. And I I do really like Fashion File at the end of the day. Balenciaga City Bag is a really great choice. And if you're looking to buy pre love definitely recommend Fashion File as a great website to kind of see... Now, if you do buy from eBay and Poshmark, um, you, I would suggest that you would get somebody that would know if it's uh, authentic or not, or, you know, get somebody that, you know, knows a thing or two about um, designer handbags. Fifth bag is going to be an other multi-pochette, or just uh, in general, and it's going to be the Prada nylon bags. This new is going to be... Um, I know that they're having their moment right now, but I just feel like the Prada nylon bag, regardless if you get a crossbody, a big satchel, I just think that it's such a classic, iconic, like, even, like, the classic Prada backpack. I just think that it will never go out of style and if they do you know a lot of these bags that I'm mentioning are very core you know they do have its season where it's very very popular but regardless like all these bags always will always be in style regardless what people say five years ago or ten years ago it was just a you have to wear in season in season I feel like right now people are really embracing what they have in their collection, what they already have, and they don't really, I feel like people don't really follow trends as much as they used to. It's not as such set in stone. It's just kind of wear whatever you want, you know what I mean? You don't have to live within a certain standard or, you know, have to have a certain thing, you know, just wear what you want to wear. So, that the product reissue is a really great bag with the strap with the extra pouch or you can get the one just with the shit has it's the Prada nylon it has a little cliche it has a chain a nice and smooth zipper right here it has a nice thick comfortable strap that has Prada on it throughout it and it has a little pouch right here and through here if it's on my credit card so my here's so if I need to get anything just pop it right out and you know pay for whatever I need to pay for that anything from the Prada nylon is a really great deal now I know that these little reissues even like the older versions do go for quite a bit uh, they are kind of pricey for pre-loved but if you go for like the backpack or like one of the uh, other classic crossbodies you can get a really great deal on them on the second hand market so I think if you do want to go for you know a black nylon bag I know nobody really does it like, like Prada so I'm definitely going to be recommending the Prada Multi Pouch as the fifth classic bag to add into your designer collection or to be one of your first bags. First six bag that's going to be on this list is going to be the Louis Vuitton Never. Oh, I know, I know, it's such a bag that everybody has. Well, you know, not everybody, but you know what I mean? It's a lot of people's first bag. A lot of people do have as their first bag or their only designer bag. I know, like I said, I try to include a little bit of everything on this list, but I do have to say the Neverfull. It is popular for a reason. A lot of people do have it. I know some people may like it, some people may not. The great thing about, you know, this list is that there's a lot of different options, but I do have to mention the Louis Vuitton Neverfull. I mean, it's a classic. It got introduced about, like, 05. It got introduced without a pouch, and then, like, a the last couple of years, they added it with the pouch. I think it's a really great bag because you get kind of a two-in-one, kind of like the multi-pochette. You get a lot of different wares and versatilities, and the Prada one, same wear a lot of versatility. So I think this is a very versatile bag. It's a very classic bag. It will never go out of style, and, you know, a lot of people that have many, many bags in their collection, they always have, like, also, I just think having one, or if you do want to add a nice wearable tote that will always get a lot of wear, that will hold up pretty well, and they can use a school bag, work bag, mommy bag. Vuitton Neverfull is a really great bag. 
ask what variation would I get. I don't like Louis Vuitton bags that have Bachetta as handles just because I feel like I would get it dirty or I would ruin the bag. So I would only go for the Damier Abin MM. That's the only one that I would buy for myself. Maybe the GM if I want a big tote, but I think for sure for me, I'm 5'11". I would definitely go for the MM Louis Vuitton Damier Abin. But I did want to mention it. Um, I think it is a classic bag and I know this bag gets a lot of hate, but I think it's classic and I don't think it's going to be going anywhere. And Louis Vuitton would not be Louis Vuitton without the Neverfull and that is a fact. Number 7 is going to be the Stella McCartney Valabella. So this bag right here, I think the larger version is 1025 but I think a lot of the smaller versions are like in the 6, 7. I think there's even a version that's 525, I believe. But the beautiful thing about this bag is that you can get a lot of great deals on the secondhand market, usually anywhere from like 20 to 50% off. So kind of like the Chloe Marcy and the Balenciaga City, this is the bag that you can get a lot of great wear out of. If you're a vegan or if you're kind of, if you don't want a leather bag, this is a really great bag because it's not real leather. Stella McCartney is a very environmental brand. They care about the earth. They do the right thing, materials, certain textures, and they do stand behind, you know, what they believe in. So since they do believe in sustainability, they do believe in, you know, having great materials and not using furs and everything that they stand behind, you know, it's also really great to support a brand like that because then let's say if you buy a bag that's secondhand from Stella McCartney, you're giving it a second life. And I feel like that's what the brand is about. I just think that the Falabella is a great bag. This is out of all the bags that I've list that I don't have. This is probably going to be the bag that I want the most. I would probably get it in a crossbody version, a small one, maybe like in a silver color or maybe just a classic black. I do think it's a classic bag. I don't think it's going to be going anywhere. And like I said, Stella McCartney is a really great brand to support and to back. I do have some of her ready to wear pieces and they're really great quality. They're really good. I wouldn't see why not. I wouldn't get a Stella McCartney bag. Also, my name is Sergio. So I, anything that has an S, I do really like a lot. And she incorporates stars and tiction. So I think that the Fella Bella is a really great bag. It's not a bag that a lot of people have. I mean, people, I do see people have it. Mostly the classic bigger version, but not a lot of the smaller bags here in Texas. So I think it's a, it's a different bag and it's really cute. So the Falabella, I have to mention. Number eight bag that I'm going to be mentioning is going to be another one that you really great deal on the pre-love market. And this is just a full brand in general. I normally don't mention full brands on lists like this, but it is going to be an exception and it is Ferragamo. Salvatore Ferragamo makes incredible Italian leather. They're known for the craftsmanship, very, very high quality. You've never seen nothing from Ferragamo look bad. I mean, obviously, you know, they have smooth leather. They have, you know, you can wear stuff to the ground, but for the most part, a lot of Ferragamo items do hold up pretty well. So I do want to mention Ferragamo as a brand just because there's so many different styles. And honestly, you can get a lot of great deals on Ferragamo items pre-loved. So if you do want a nice pre-loved, even like around the $500 mark or a little bit less or a little bit more, I think you get really great deals on Ferragamo bags and I don't think people talk about them enough. I don't even see like, I don't remember the last time I saw a genuine like YouTuber that talks about kind of fashion and stuff talk about anything Ferragamo except their belts. So I just think that the anything from the Ferragamo line, like their totes or satchels, and I'll kind of insert the prices and the styles that I'm kind of talking about. I just think that the Ferragamos are just underrated. Nobody talks about them. And they're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Italian leather handbags. And you can get an awesome deal on the pre-love market. So I thought I would mention Ferragamo. And like I said, it will never go out of style. Ferragamo is a classic, effortlessly brand. Number nine is going to be the Gucci Soho Disco. So I did want to mention one Gucci bag because I know a lot of people do really like Gucci as a brand. I will be showing you the bag that I have in my collection that's very similar to the Gucci Soho Disco. It is this crossbody from All Saints and it's essentially kind of the same thing. It's about the same size maybe. It's basically essentially this kind of style bag. It's more of a camera bag. It has GG embossed. And that's what I like versus it's having it kind of metal Gucci. It's more embossed. I feel like it looks more casual. It looks more effortlessly. Also as the zipper. So I just think that the Gucci Soho. Wow. I think this is the only Gucci item from the Soho collection that they still sell on their full price boutiques. I think I think any other Gucci Soho item has gotten discontinued throughout the years. And the Gucci Soho still remains in their collection. It will never be. I don't see it going anywhere. And even if it did get discontinued. I just think it's such a timeless and classic bag. You know, 
on the inside it has a fabric lining little gucci tag on the inside i think that the gucci soho is a great crossbody that you know if you do want that embroidered a uh, brand design but it's not as in your face it's a little bit more casual a little bit more sleek or you can just turn it around and you know it doesn't have any branding or anything but by the shape and by the tassel you can distinguish that it is a gucci bag but I just think that I did want to mention one Gucci bag in this list that's not my ma, and I just think that the Gucci Soho Disco spot on great bag. The tenth bag on my list as your first designer handbag is going to be the Louis Vuitton Speed. Now the one that I would get is obviously the Louis Vuitton Speedy and it being regardless with the bandolier, which the bandolier is with the strap on it. Or just a classic one without the strap in either set or 35 depending. This is just an iconic bag classic i think it's more i think out of all these bags on this list i think this one has been out the longest i don't see it going anywhere as popular let's say as as neverfull but it is a very kind of classic timeless looking handbag i do really like this bag even like out of all the louis vuitton bags that they make i still kind of like the speedy i've always been a fan of it i always like kind of like the boxy shape of it how you can fit a lot don't see it going anywhere now if you do buy this bag or like the neverfull anything that has vachetta leather which is vachetta is Kind of like this little piece right here that over time as you wear Bachetta leather, it gets darkened and it gets a lot more darker, darker. As you can see with my multi pochette, it is very kind of clear, a lot more wider. It is just because for like over three months, so it's still in that very kind of baby stage. Or you can even see if I lift this up, it's even wider right there. So I just think that I would get it brand new, not pre-loved, just because they do look a little bit more older and they don't really look more aesthetically pleasing through my view as they kind of get more wear so i would get those um honestly get the speedy or the neverfull brand new just because the good looking ones that are in great condition tend to only go for like a hundred dollars off retail so i'd just rather get a brand new one from the boutique it's the iconic speedy wear it with a white top wear it with a biker jacket wear it with the blazer wear it with the suit wear it with denim with a tank top i just think that it's just such a classic going bag yeah, I just think that all these bags that I'm mentioning on this list are great ones. So we're going to go by the list one more time. The Chloe Marcy, perfect bag, great one. The YSO Lulu, the Louis Vuitton Multi Pochette, the Balenciaga Multi Pochette or Prada Nylon in general. The Louis Vuitton Neverfull, particularly in the MM size. Falabella by Stella McCartney. Ferragamo Anything, I just think is really great. Louis Vuitton Speedy and the Gucci Soho bag. I think these are really great bags. I try to include them under $2,000. I know I've seen YouTube videos where they do your first designer handbags and a lot of them, they include Chanel and Dior and Hermes and stuff. I'm like, for me, I would not, I don't, I, as my first bag, you know, that's a little bit excessive, a little bit too, too much. So a lot of these bags are under $2,000 or even if you get them pre-loved, they're like under a thousand or like right around the thousand dollar mark. So I try to make it, you know, $2,000 is a lot of money, but a lot of these bags, like I said, you can get them pre-loved, you can get them marked for a great bargain. So in reality, it's more like $1,500 in under list. And yeah, I think this is a really great list. And if you guys have any recommendations for my subscribers that have a good collection or you have any bags that I'm mentioning on this list, definitely leave your comments down below for all the other people that maybe do want to buy their first bag or maybe just have one or two bags in their collection. Um, definitely leave your comments and your suggestions down below if there's any bags that you feel like I miss that are really great bags or any bags that you don't agree on this list. I would definitely love to hear your conversations down below. And I know it's such a requested video and I definitely wanted to make it just because you guys have been asking for this one because I did do one for a contemporary version which I will leave linked down below. And yeah, I'm just so happy that I finally filmed this video for you guys. And yeah, these are going to be 10 bags that I highly recommend as your first designer handbags. I'm just really happy and I'm really content with the list and hopefully you guys like it. And I would love to hear your opinions down below. And like I said, also any video requests, leave them down below and all the links will be down in the description box. Thank you so much for watching this video by Sergio Secrets. I really, really appreciate each and every single one of you. Y los miro, sala próxima video. Thank you, thank you so much.